Hello, my name's Karina Thompson and welcome to another episode in the series Getting Started with Digitising Using the MySonet Embroidery Software. If you're a subscriber or own a copy of MySonet, why not subscribe to our free YouTube channel and that way you won't miss out on any of our future films. In this video, I'm on a PC with the Platinum level of software installed, although everything I show you today you'll be able to do on a Mac because the principles are exactly the same. This video is a continuation of the earlier episode, An Introduction to Satin Stitches. I'm going to be showing you how you can do other decorative column stitches. I'm on the Point Create tab and here is the column section. This section is also available on the Freehand Create tab. So let's begin talking about feathered satin stitches. I'm actually just going to zoom in so that you can really see what I'm up to. I'm going to click on the feathered satin uh, button and uh, note where I'm going to put my first node down. So you'll remember from that earlier film that we plot a series of nodes in almost like a ladder to um, build our column. And one top tip is we'll always be plotting opposite. The next node needs to be opposite where the yellow point is. And these perpendicular lines that I'm putting in here are indicating the direction of our satin stitches. And I'm just going to do a right click here to finish that off. Of course, if you need to, you can always do a left click and drag and move your points if you think you're they're not quite right. Today in this film I'm using my imagination but it could be that I've loaded a background in here that I'm actually following and tracing. That's a really great way of developing ideas. So um, I'm happy with my column. Oh, no, not quite. And so I'm now going to do a right click and you can see that that's actually put this feathered satin stitch in. So I'm going to open up the properties by uh, doing a right click on that object in the film strip and going down to properties here. And that opens up the column uh, properties box. Now the density, the default is 15. And you'll remember from earlier films that the higher the number is here, the more open our satin stitchery is going to be. The default start is always feathering on both sides. Now, can you remember, I said, remember about that first node. My first node was around about on this point. Now, if I click on the side A button and click apply, you can see that that has just put the feathering in on that side of that first node because that's side A. And of course, if I wanted it the other way around, I could click on side B and click apply. Now, the thickness of our actual feathering column is about two to two and a half times of the original column that we've put in. The stitch length is about how long your stitch length is. Now, you can go up to 30 mil. And you'll remember from earlier films, be careful about having a stitch length that long for two reasons. One, you might find that if your embroidery is going to have lots of wear, perhaps it's on a garment, you might find that things catch on uh, your stitching being that unsecure. But also many embroidery machines will see a stitch that's 30 mil long as a jump stitch. And it will think that it's helping you by cutting it off. So what you can do is if I bring this down to say 9 mil and click apply, what in actual facts happened, and you might be able to see, we've got a slight darkness on some points, that, that what would happen is the machine would go stitch at 9 mil, then do another stitch till the end point and then back. And that would make that 
um, much more secure if this is going to be quite hard wearing. You might want to consider using feathered satin stitches, for instance, if you want to add texture to a surface, or very often it's used to get a blending mode. So for instance, what you'd then do is do a colour change and repeat it. So for instance, if you wanted a colour change on uh, flower petals, something like that. So let me close this down. I'm going to move along and let's talk about rich loo bars. And again, just like before, I'm going to plop my points in. Now, rich loo bars are bands of satin stitch that tend to be used on uh, machine lace or cutaway areas of fabric in um, decorative embroidery. So that you would actually have your lines of satin stitch would be there sort of filling an empty space within your embroidery and of course you can move your uh, nodes around if you need to and a right click is going to put those rich loo bars in. Now another way of getting the property dialog box is to click on your object so we've got the nodes here and of course if you wanted to you can actually edit your shape at this point But what I'm now going to do is do a right click and that's brought up the dialog box. So let's talk about what's going on here. This first box, this is about what's going on with each of the bars. And so in this case, the width is 2mm and the density is 4. Because usually how rich loo bars are used um, is that they're stitched on perhaps uh, a hole that you've cut in your fabric and maybe that there is water soluble fabric or maybe you're doing machine lace directly on to water soluble fabric. You probably want the density to stay quite um, high. It's also important that you have plenty of underlay stitching in there because basically that part of your embroidery will just be the thread so you need quite a lot of thread. So I would say don't change any of those properties in there because probably you are going to need um, uh, all that underlay unless there's an issue there. So let's talk about what's going on with the method. Now what's actually happening here, this minimum gap size is essentially on the widest edge what size is that minimum gap. Another way of doing this is it might be you say, well, actually, I want a specific number of bars. So you could specify that. So, for instance, let's say I just wanted eight bars in here. I could click apply and there's my eight bars. But also I've got this box checked here, the additional first and last bar, which depending on how you're doing your rich loop bars, you may or may not want to have on there. And let me show you what I mean. So for instance, if I uncheck this and click apply, that would take the first and last bar out. I've still got eight rich loop bars in here, but that would mean that if I was picking my shape up, perhaps with a complete satin line going all the way around here, we're not going to want a first and last bar in there because we would then be doing our outline satin edge over it. So again, I'm going to close this down. And I'm actually going to zoom out a little bit more. And let's talk about the tapered motifs. And tapered motifs are actually probably my favourite column for reasons that hopefully you'll see. So just like before, I'm putting my column in. In this case, I'm going to um, really play round with the size going wider and narrower. Also, let's get a bit of a curve in here as well, again, for reasons that I hope to showcase. And again, I right clicked. Now you'll know from earlier films, anything to do with motifs, the uh, default motif 
is this star shape in here and in actual fact I'm just gonna bring that down and let's open up the property box like before and move this out of the way so we can see what I'm doing. So as I've mentioned the default is always this star. So let's talk about the options on here. If I wanted to I could opt rather than having a single running stitch I might want a triple stitch. If I needed to be very accurate perhaps if I was losing some of the definition of my patterns I might want to uh, narrow down the length of my stitching and just like on the rich loop bars I could either specify the minimum gap or it might be that I just want to have a specific number of those motifs within that column that I've um, uh, drawn out um, in this case in actual fact I'm going to go back if I wanted to uncheck the proportional feature what in actual fact would happen here is the size of each motif would remain uh, would still fill the column but the width in this case would only be 15 mil uh, wide let me show you so you'd end up with these sort of very uh, small skinny but um, long tall uh, shapes and again I'm gonna click back and if I wanted to go fit to line what would actually happen is the motif is being fitted to an imaginary line that's running through the center of my column and again you can see we've got a little bit of um, sort of distortion happening which might be exactly you might actually want that uh, sense of uh, flow in this case I'm going to uncheck that and click apply. Anytime we're working with a, a motif stitch we can click on the pull down arrow uh, for the group category which allows us to access virtually any stitch on a Husqvarna Viking or a Faf sewing machine. So let me show you. I'm going to choose Husqvarna Viking. I'm going to click on the category. I'm going to go decorative stitches and I am going to choose stitch 34 which is like a little sort of satin uh, ball and then I am going to click apply and so you can actually see that that actually gives you the ability to really adapt and customize the decorative stitches within the software to the columns that you've drawn if you found this a useful film, please give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel so we can help you get started with digitizing. Happy sewing.